hey guys what's up so let us discuss environment and ecology mcqs question 71 to 80 mina mater disease the neurological syndrome caused by severe so answer here is a mercury poisoning so it is a very common condition if you have a mercury poisoning the condition as such is not common but in a city called mina mater in japan it was widespread some time ago so large plastic plant located near the Minamata Bay used a mercury containing compound in a reaction to provide vinyl chloride and the leftover mercury was dumped into a bay and uh, basically microorganism at the bottom of the bay converted into organic form and when the people eat fishes or seafood and uh, they can, can kill people and uh, that's called the Minamata disease. Question number 72 which of the following are correctly matched? Aerosol is particle suspended in air that is correct. Fog is aerosol consisting of water droplet, correct. Mixture of smoke and fog is called as smog, so that is also correct. Answer is D123. Question number 73. Every year at Gahir Matha Beach and Odisha coast, hundreds of thousands of olive ridley turtles congregate on the beach between December and April for mass nesting. After its discovery in 1974, it was notified as a sanctuary. What is the name of the sanctuary? So, answer here is B. Bitter Karnika uh, Sanctuary. So it was in 1974 that it was declared. Question number 74. The conservation and maintenance of samples of living organisms inside their natural habitat is called as NC2. Outside is XC2. It is very simple. So answer is XC2. XC2 where can you do? You can do in zoological gardens. You can do it in botanical gardens. Zoo just go both there. Then you can have DNA storage, slow growth storage, captive breeding, seed storage. All these are examples. Okay. So when you take out outside the natural habitat, that is they are not in wildlife sanctuary, national park or sacred groves. Question number 75, which of the following are example of in situ conservation? I just told you all of them right now that wildlife sanctuary, national park, all these are example of uh, in situ conservation, then biosphere reserves, sacred groves. So answer will be uh, even gene centuries to a certain extent because it is an in-situ form of conservation so answer is c1234 so gene sanctuary is an area where plants are conserved it includes both biosphere reserve as a national park and gene bank is totally different it is a biological laboratory so ramsar convention is an international treaty everybody should know that uh, it is a place in iran ramsar iran and it is related to wetlands so answer is a so ramsar convention on wetlands of international importance is an international treaty for conservation and sustainable use of wetlands it is also known as convention on wetlands and it is named after the city of ramsar in iran where the convention was signed in the year 1971 question number 77 the area of biosphere and which is protected entirely without any experimentation and research and no biotic interference is known as that is basically called as the core zone so apart from that there is a buffer zone which is like surrounding the core zone so it is like a three layer so in innermost is the buffer zone then you have outside you have the uh, so innermost is core zone outside your buffer zone and the most outdoor one is transition zone the transition zone is basically every all the activities happen here settlements cropland management everything is going on there buffer zone is between transition and core zone that is what is called as buffer zone and activities here are restricted, limited recreation, limited tourism, limited fishing, grazing, which are permitted to reduce its effect on the core zone. Question number 78. Identify the lake based on the following characteristics. It is India's largest inland salt lake. Answer is basically Sambar Lake and it is very close to Jaipur city. And while I was in sixth class, we went there for our picnic. And it has been designated as a Ramsar site. That is correct. So answer here is Sambar Salt Lake. It is India's largest inland salt lake. It is a Ramsar site recognized wetland of international importance because the wetland is a key wintering area for tens of thousands of flamingos and other birds that migrate from northern Asia. Question number 79. Which of the following are correctly matched? Chipko movement Sundarlal Bhavuna is correct. Narmada Bada Andulan Mehta Patkar that is correct. Silent Spring basically is a book written by Rachel Carlson. Al Gore is vice president of United States and he got more votes than George Bush but unfortunately lost so answer is C1 and 2 Silent Spring is an environmental science book by Rachel Carlson and the book documented the adverse effect on the environment because of the indiscriminate use of pesticides particularly DDT an area of land saturated with water is known as wetland so a wetland is an area that is saturated with water and many wetlands are transitional zones between upland and aquatic ecosystems 
and watershed is an area that separates waters flowing to different rivers basin or seas and a check dam is a small sometimes temporary dam constructed across a soil drainage ditch etc so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 81 to 90 in this environment and ecology course which of the following are considered as wetlands so estuary river lake mangroves all these are example of wetlands wetland is a place where the land is covered by water usually saturated either salt or fresh they can be two types and uh, depending on this otherwise they can be five types so marine which is ocean estuary which is estuary riverine which is river lacustrine which is lake and palustrine which is marsh common land for common names for wetlands include marshes estuaries mangroves mud flats mires ponds fens swamps deltas coral reefs billabong lagoon shallow seas bogs lakes and flood plains okay Question number eighty-two. The objective of Operation Kachappa is to basically conserve all of the turtles. So Operation Kachappa is a conservation effort being coordinated by Wildlife Protection Society of India, Delhi, and Wildlife Society of Odisha. And uh, Operation Turtle program has launched a variety of measures to basically spread awareness as well as taking direct action to prevent the death of the turtles. And it conducts a large number of awareness programs for fisher folk in the area. And these include mobile exhibitions. Volunteers visiting fishing villages to spread the message of turtle conservation through songs, skits, and paintings. What is the common to the technique in vitro fertilization, cryo preservation, and tissue culture? Uh, all of them are ex situ. In situ basically means in the location of the. कहाँ मिलेगा लॉयन आपको? Lion will be found in the village. No, lion will found in the forest, right? So if you conserve him in a wildlife park, biosphere reserve. National Park or Wildlife Sanctuary or a sacred grove, then they are in situ. If you preserve them in zoological parks, botanical parks, fertilization, cryo preservation, tissue culture, they are ex situ. So I think I have explained it very clearly. Question number eighty four: Which of the following statements are are correct? Legally binding commitment on the part of the developed countries to reduce carbon emission was provided in the Kyoto Protocol. That is correct. The legally binding commitments were reduced to an agreement in. Cancun Conference that is also correct. So Kyoto Protocol is an international treaty which extends the 1992 UNF Triple C that commits state parties to reduce greenhouse gas emission based on the premise that global warming exists and man-made anthropogenic CO2 emissions have caused it. And uh, with the first commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol to end in 2002, 12 many countries wanted it to be reached in Cancun, but it did not reach. Cancun is in Mexico. Question number eighty-five: Which of the following places have coral reef formations? Park Bay, Gulf of Manaar, Gulf of Kutch, Andaman and Nicobar Island, Lakshadweep Island. So answer is one, two, three, four, five. All of these have uh, coral reef formation. Okay, and they have different types of reefs. So do read it about here. Kyoto Convention or Protocol is concerned with basically it is concerned with climate change. Everybody knows about it. So Kyoto Protocol is an international agreement linked to UNF Triple C. Commits its parties by settling international binding emissions. Degree of biodiversity increases from always, always it will increase towards equator. Equator will have highest maximum biodiversity because of tropical rainforest, abundance sunlight, abundance water. So it will be from poles to equator. So if you go up, then the biodiversity will reduce. If you go north or southwards, then the biodiversity will reduce from equator. So biodiversity typically measures variation in the genetic species and ecosystem level. Tends to be near at the great equator and sea level. If you go up or down, then it will decrease. If you go north or south, it will decrease. So whereas the extreme temperature weather condition has pole resulted in few species of plants and animals inhabiting it. Consider the following statements. It is set aside for the protection and conservation of outstanding natural fauna, flora, geological formation, and natural scenic. Okay. Uh, hunting, killing, or capturing of fauna or deprivation of any wildlife, any other which are related to destruction. And weapons are all prohibited. Okay, grazing of any livestock shall not be permitted. So, which which describes the best? So, if we are talking about this, it is typical definition of a national park. In biosphere reserve, there will be some areas for human beings also. So, grazing will be allowed in some part. It cannot be biosphere reserve. Tiger reserve does not make any sense. So, it is a basically question between national park and wildlife sanctuary. But wildlife sanctuary is something different. It just denotes an area which is set aside for the conservation, protection, and management of wildlife in its habitat. But as far as I already told you, it improvement of relation between man and environment, and it is very big. Tiger reserves is totally different ball game altogether. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर 89 कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग फूड चेन फ्रॉम अ लेक इकोसिस्टम फाइटोप्लैंकटन स्मॉल स्नेल स्टिकल बैक फिश किंग फिशर बर्ड इफ द लेक इकोसिस्टम इज पॉलिटेड पेस्टिसाइड्स व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग विल कंटेन द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ पेस्टिसाइड्स किंग फिशर बर्ड इज द आंसर बिकॉज़ इट इज बायोमैग्निफिकेशन देयर एग्स विल बी ब्रिटल बिकॉज़ द कैल्शियम फॉर्मेशन विल बी अपसेट एंड देन कैन लीड टू डेथ ऑफ देयर चिक्स बिफोर दे हैच ओके सो दैट इज द फिनोमेना इज कॉल्ड एज बायोमैग्निफिकेशन एंड द कंसंट्रेशन इंक्रीजेस हायर अप द फूड चेन it happens with ddt also which of the following biosphere reserve of india is are part of the world network of biosphere reserves based on the unesco man and biosphere program nokrek biosphere reserve for sure sundarban biosphere reserve is also there uh, panchamadi biosphere reserve is also there manas is not there 10 of the 18 biosphere reserves are there so what are these 10 nilgiri biosphere reserve in tamil nadu kerala karnataka gulf of manar biosphere is in tamil nadu sundarban biosphere reserve in west bengal नंदा देवी इज इन उत्तराखंड नॉकरैक इज इन मेघालय पंचमढ़ी इज इन एम पी सिमलीपाल इज इन ओडिशा अचानक मार अमरकंटक इज इन छत्तीसगढ़ एंड मध्य प्रदेश ग्रेट निकोबार इज इन अंडमान एंड निकोबार आइलैंड एंड अगस्त्य मलय बायस वे रिजर्व इन केरल एंड तमिलनाडु सो थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस लेसन हे गा इज वॉट्सअप सो लेट एस डिस्कस क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी वन टू नाइनटी इन दिस एनवायरमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी कोर्स विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर कंसिडर्ड एज वेटलैंड सो वेस्टरी रिवर लेक मैंग्रोव ऑल दीज आर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वेटलैंड wetland is a place where the land is covered by water usually saturated either salt or fresh they can be two types and uh, depending on this otherwise they can be five types so marine which is ocean estuary which is estuary riverine which is river lacustrine which is lake and palustrine which is marsh common land for common names for wetland include marshes estuaries mangroves mud flats mires ponds fens swamps deltas coral reefs billabong lagoon shallow seas bogs lakes and flood plains okay क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी टू द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ ऑपरेशन कचप्पा इज टू बेसिकली कंजर्व ऑल एवर रिली टर्टल्स सो ऑपरेशन कचप्पा इज अ कंजर्वेशन एफर्ट बीइंग कोऑर्डिनेटेड बाय वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया दिल्ली एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ सोसाइटी ऑफ ओडिशा एंड ऑपरेशन टर्टल प्रोग्राम हैज लॉन्च अ वेराइटी ऑफ मेजर्स टू बेसिकली स्प्रेड अवेयरनेस एज वेस्ट इंग डायरेक्ट एक्शन टू प्रिवेंट द डेथ ऑफ द टर्टल्स एंड इट कंडक्ट्स अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम्स फॉर फिशर फोक इन द एरिया एंड दीज इंक्लूड्स मोबाइल एग्जीबिशंस volunteers visiting fishing villages to spread the message of turtle conservation through songs skits and paintings what is the common to the technique in vitro fertilization cryo preservation and tissue culture uh all of them are ex situ in situ basically means in the location of the kahan milega lion aapko lion will be found in the village no lion will found in the forest right so if you conserve him in a wildlife park biosphere reserve national park or wildlife sanctuary or a sacred grove then they are in situ if you preserve them in zoological parks botanical parks fertilization cryo preservation tissue culture they are ex situ so have i think i have explained it very clearly question number 84 which of the following statements are are correct legally binding commitment on the part of the developed countries to reduce carbon emission as provided in the kyoto protocol that is correct the legally binding commitments were reduced to an agreement in Kankan conference that is also correct so kyoto protocol is an international treaty which extends the 1992 unf triple c that commits state parties to reduce greenhouse gas emission based on the premise that global warming exists and man made anthropogenic co2 emissions have caused it and uh, with the first commitment period of the kyoto protocol to end in 2002 12 many countries wanted it to be reached in kankan but it did not reach kankan is in mexico Question number eighty-five: Which of the following places have coral reef formations? Park Bay, Gulf of Manar, Gulf of Kutch, Andaman and Nicobar Island, Lakshadweep Island. So answer is one, two, three, four, five. All of these have uh, coral reef formation. Okay, and they have different types of reefs. So do read it about here. Kyoto Convention or Protocol is concerned with basically it is concerned with climate change. Everybody knows about it. So Kyoto Protocol is an international agreement linked to UNF Triple C. commits its parties by settling international binding emissions degree of biodiversity increases from always always it will increase towards equator equator will have highest maximum biodiversity because of tropical rainforest abundance and light abundance water so it will be from poles to equator so if you go up then the biodiversity will reduce if you go north or southwards then the biodiversity will reduce from equator so biodiversity typically measures variation in the genetic species and ecosystem level tends to be near at the great equator and sea level if you go up or down then it will decrease if you go north or south it will decrease so whereas the extreme temperature weather condition has poled resulted in few species of plants and animals inhabiting it 
कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स इट इज सेट असाइड फॉर द प्रोटेक्शन एंड कंजर्वेशन ऑफ आउटस्टैंडिंग नेचुरल फॉन ऑफ लोरा जियोलॉजिकल फॉर्मेशन एंड नेचुरल सीनिक ओके हंटिंग किलिंग और कैप्चरिंग ऑफ फॉन और डिप्रोवेशन ऑफ एनी वाइल्ड लाइफ एनी मदर विटर डिस्ट्रक्शन एंड वेपन्स आर ऑल प्रोहिबिटेड ओके ग्रेजिंग ऑफ एनी लाइफ स्टॉक शेल नॉट बी परमिटेड सो विच विच डिस्क्राइब्स द बेस्ट सो इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इट इज टिपिकल डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ नेशनल पार्क इन बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व देर विल बी सम एरियाज फॉर ह्यूमन बींग्स ऑल्सो सो ग्रेजिंग विल बी अलाउड इन सम पार्ट इट कैनॉट बी बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व टाइगर रिजर्व डज नॉट मेक एनी सेंस सो इट्स अ बेसिकली क्वेश्चन इट इन नेशनल पार्क एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी बट वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी समथिंग डिफरेंट इट जस्ट डिनोट्स एन एरिया विच इज सेट असाइड फॉर द कंजर्वेशन प्रोटेक्शन एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ इट इन डेबिट आर्ट बायोस्फेयर इज आर ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू इट इंप्रूवमेंट ऑफ रिलेशन बिटवीन मैन एंड एनवायरमेंट एंड इट इज वेरी बिग टाइगर रिजर्व इज टोटली डिफरेंट बॉल गेम ऑल टूगेदर क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी नाइन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग फूड चेन फ्रॉम अ लेक इको सिस्टम वाइट प्लैंगटॉन स्मॉल स्नेल स्टिकल बैक फिश किंग फिशर बर्ड इफ द लेक इको सिस्टम फॉलोड टू पेस्टिसाइड विच ऑन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग विल कंटेन द मैक्सिम ऑफ पेस्टिसाइड्स किंग फिशर बर्ड इज द आंसर बिकॉज इट इज बायो मैग्निफिकेशन देर एक्स विल बी ब्रिटल बिकॉज ऑफ कैल्शियम फॉर्मेशन विल बी अपसेट एंड देन कैन लीड टू डेथ ऑफ देयर चिक्स बिफोर द हैच ओके सो दैट इज द फिन ऑफ कॉलेज बायो मैग्निफिकेशन विद द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इंक्रीज इज हायर ऑफ द फूड चेन It happens with DDT also. Which of the following biosphere reserve of India is our part of the World Network of Biosphere Reserves based on the UNESCO Man and Biosphere Program? Nokrek Biosphere Reserve for sure. Sundarban Biosphere Reserve is also there. Uh, Panchamadi Biosphere Reserve is also there. Manas is not there. Ten of the eighteen biosphere reserves are there. So what are these ten? Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka. Gulf of Mannar Biosphere is in Tamil Nadu. Sundarban Biosphere Reserve in West Bengal. Nanda Devi is in Uttarakhand, Nokrek is in Meghalaya, Panchamadi is in MP, Simli Pal is in Odisha, Achanak Maharamar Kantak is in Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh, Great Nicobar is in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and Agastya Malaya Biosphere Reserve in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So let us discuss question number 91 to 100, okay, and it is environment and ecology. Identify the national park using the following characteristics. It is the only national park, floating national park in the world. आंसर इज कीबल लमजा नेशनल पार्क देर इज नो अदर फ्लोटिंग नेशनल पार्क इट इज एन इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ लोक तक लेक इट इज एन रिफ्यूज फॉर द इंडिजन में संगा आइडियर एंड इट इज प्रेजेंट नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया एंड द स्टेट ऑफ मणिपुर एंड द डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ बिश्नेपुर एनी थिंग एल्स यू नीड सो आफ्टर दिस लेसन यू डोंट नीड टू रन लैंड एनी थिंग कीबल लमजा नेशनल पार्क इज इन बिश्नोपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ स्टेट ऑफ मणिपुर इन इंडिया इट इज द ओनली फ्लोटिंग नेशनल पार्क इन द एंटायर वर्ल्ड इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द लोक तक लेक एंड इट इज होम टू द इंडेंजर्ड संगा आइडियर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी टू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर करेक्टली मैस्ड गोल्डन लंगूर तो दैट इज एंडेंजर्ड ब्लैक बॉक इज लीस्ट कंसर्न गॉर इज क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड दिस इज रॉन्ग गॉर इज लिस्टेड एज वलरेबल आंसर इज इज ए वन एंड टू इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल इज इंडियन बाइसन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी थ्री इन रिसेंट सेंसेस कंडक्टेड फॉर डी ईयर स्पीसीज इट वॉज फाउंड दैट देर वॉज नाइन्टी परसेंट रिडक्शन इन पॉपुलेशन ओवर द लास्ट टेन ईयर्स देर वॉज जस्ट फोर्टी एट मेच्योर इंडिविजुअल्स ऑफ द स्पीसी लेफ्ट And now, as you saw, there is fifty percent probability for extinction in wild, so it is typically critically endangered. So, uh, in for a suspected population size reduction of more than ninety percent over ten years or three generations, population size is less than two fifty mature individuals, and if at least fifty percent uh, extinction chance is there within ten years or three generation, then it is critically endangered. Okay, basically, it is a very very high risk of extinction in the wild is going on. Which ecosystem has the following characteristics? They have nematophores. If you see the word nematophore, answer has to be mangroves. Blind roots and they have to overcome respiration problem in the anaerobic soil condition. They exhibit viviparity mode of reproduction. That is, seeds germinate in the tree itself before falling to the ground. So answer here is a mangroves. So it has anaerobic soil conditions and saline water. Hence, to overcome these problems, plants have adapted by producing nematophores and germinating seeds in the tree itself. क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी फाइव कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट सुमात्रन डायनासोरॉस मालाबार क्यूवेट एंड अंडमान वाइट टूटेड श्रू ऑल दीज आर क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड सो आंसर इज इज डी वन टू थ्री सो अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट इट्स पिग्मी हॉक कोंडाना रेड लार्ज रॉक रेड और एलवेरा रेड नाम दफा फ्लाइंग स्कोरल सुमात्रन डायनासोरॉस मालाबार क्यूवेट एंड अंडमान वाइट टूटेड श्रू क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी सिक्स क्वेश्चन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एनिमल्स इज लोकली एक्सटिंक्ट इन इंडिया एशियोटिक लाइन्स कैन बी फाउंड इन गुजरात इंडियन एलिफेंट कैन बी फाउंड इन राजस्थान केरला एवरीवेयर इंडियन लेपर्ड इज आल्सो प्रेजेंट इन अ फ्यू स्टेट्स बट एशियाटिक चीता इज गॉन इन इंडिया 
सो एशियाटिक चीता इज एक्स जो बैटस वेनेटिकस इट्स वंस रेंज ओवर द ग्रास लैंड ऑफ इंडिया पाकिस्तान रशिया इरान एंड मिडिल ईस्ट इट बिकेम बिकॉज लाइक एक्सेसिव हंटिंग ऑफ ब्रिटिशर्स वाइब्ड इट आउट एंड प्रिंसेज ऑफ प्रिंसली स्टेट्स कंप्लीट वाइब्ड आउट हैबिटार डिस्ट्रक्शन केयर सिटी ऑफ प्रेस स्पीसीज सो दैट्स वाई अनफॉर्चुनेटली द फास्टेस्ट मैमल इज नॉट देयर इन इंडिया The register of wetland sites on the list of wetlands of international importance, where changes in ecological character have occurred, are occurring or likely to occur as a result of technological developments, pollution, or other human interference, is known as that is Montreal Record. The so Red Deer Book is a type of a public document created and maintained by UCN. Okay, it is for like threatened species, endangered species, and transboundary Ramsar sites are those wetlands that are ecologically coherent but extends ac- across national boundary. For example, it can be in Indian Pakistan, India, Nepal, U.S., Canada. Which of the following statements are correct? The Earth Summit was held in Rio de Janeiro in June 1992. That is correct. It is also known as IUCN. Yeah, IUCN is completely different organization. Answer is A, one only. So, on uh, UNCED, United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, is also called as Rio Earth Summit, Rio Conference or Summit, Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit. Led to adoption of Agenda 21, which is a wide-ranging blueprint for action to achieve sustainable development worldwide. Question number 99. Which of the following pairs are correctly matched? Earth Summit is in Brazil. That is correct. Rio de Janeiro is in Brazil. Montreal Protocol, Canada. That is also correct. Cancun Agreement is in Mexico. It is not in Japan. So answer here is one and two. So I have already covered Rio. Montreal Protocol is sustainable substance that depletes the ozone layer. It is basically for ozone depleting substance. It is considered one of the most successful international treaty. And Cancun Agreement is for long term challenge of climate change. Cancun is a city in Mexico or Mexico. Hundredth question. So we are one tenth here. I promised thousand MCQs and ten percent of is done. Sustainable development was defined as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs in current land report. It was in 1987. That is 30 years ago. It was developed by former Norwegian Prime Minister, and it is titled "Our Common Future." And uh, it was a result of World Commission on Environment and Development. And Montreal Record is a register of wetland sites where changes in ecological character has occurred. And Silent Spring is an environmental book by Rachel Carlson. So thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So let us discuss question number one hundred eleven to one hundred twenty in environment and ecology, and uh, let's get started. And this is will be a one-stop solution for all the thousand MCQs. By the time we're done with the static portion, trust me, most of the questions which you'll find from the static portion in any government exam will be from this. The study of the interaction of an individual organism or a single species with the living and non-living factors of its environment is known as OT. Ot means single species, sin means many species. So ot ecology is the answer. So ot ecology, also called as species ecology, is the study of the interaction of an individual organism or a single species with the living and non-living factors of environment, and it aims to measure factors such as nutrient availability, fire light, humidity, in relation to the organism or species thriving in a particular environment. And sin ecology is the study of group of organisms or many species or communities in relation to their environment. So, ot means single species, sin means group of species. Which of the following are correctly matched? Peripatric speciation: members inhabiting a peripheral region of the range undergo reproductive isolation. So that is correct. Sympatric speciation: um, some sympatric uh, speciation is basically uh, reproductive isolation, and allopatric speciation is geographical isolation. So answer is A, one only. So allopatric speciation occurs when population becomes separated by geographical barriers like mountain, rivers, etc. And sympatric occurs when two or more species are formed from a single ancestral species, all occupying same geographical area, but they are not reproductively compatible. Formation of two or more species from a single ancestral species, all occupying same geographical area, is known as. So that is called as I have already explained. Uh, they are sympatric speciation. They are not reproductively compatible with each other. And when population becomes separated by geographical barriers like mountains and rivers, it is allopatric. Okay, and evolution is change in heritable characteristics of living organisms over successive generations, and coevolution is mutual evolutionary influence between two or more interdependent species. Question number one one four: The evolution of polar bears from brown bear is an example of. 
that is a typical example of peripatric speciation because a small group of members inhabiting a peripheral region of the range undergoes reproductive isolation to form a new species that is a typical example of peripatric speciation so during the pleistocene period what happened was glaciation resulted in isolation of a small population of brown bears and the members of this population acquired white fur for camouflaging because of snow ability to swim in extremely cold water and over long distances tolerance to extremely cold conditions and many more the effect of a gene that favors cigarette smoking has dwindled in some groups of humans in just one generation this is an example of this is an example of microevolution because it is happening at dna level so microevolution is a change in species at molecular or dna level and small changes can happen through a lot of mutations or other random environmental factors etc uh, organisms which occupy same ecological niche in different geographical regions they are called as they are basically ecological equivalents so there are a lot of such people okay so species which are ecological equivalents are taxonomically much different and a grassland type ecosystem develops where there is a grassland climate but the species of grasses and grazer may be quite different where regions are widely separated and grasses in temperate and semi arid part of australia are very very different from those of similar climatic region of north america consider the following types of interaction commensalism mutualism parasitism which one of the following will promote coevolution all three will promote coevolution because in commensalism one will get benefited in parasitism one will get benefited other will get harmed in mutualism both will uh, evolve equally so mutualism is typical example is lichen where algae and fungal live together parasitism is like uh there are so many examples let's say tape worm is a parasite on human beings so they have to evolve along with human beings commensalism is basically barnacles on a fish where fish does not get harms uh, let's say whale whale does not get harm but barnacles get benefited so answer is d123 so it occurs when in adapting to their environments two or more organisms evolve together hence interaction between different species of animals become a prerequisite for coevolution and if both of the interacting species have reciprocal effects on the fitness of the other species the two species may coevolve question number 118 which of the following statements about troposphere is or are correct all the weather phenomena like rainfall fog hail storm etc they occur in troposphere and troposphere is ideal for flying aeroplanes no 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 aeroplane fly in troposphere because yahan pe to there are clouds rainfall the plane always fly above the troposphere and it flies above the troposphere in stratosphere almost at the junction of troposphere and stratosphere but not below the troposphere okay so answer here is a one only so troposphere consists of almost all of water vapor and dust particles in atmosphere most cloud 99% are formed in this layer and stratosphere is free from clouds associated weather phenomenon making conditions most ideal for flying aeroplanes so aeroplanes almost fly at the junction of troposphere and stratosphere at roughly 10 kilometers which of the following are correctly matched so stratosphere is uh, ozone layer yes absolutely correct thermosphere thermal insulation to earth no 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 this is wrong and uh, mesosphere radio transmission this is also wrong thermosphere is responsible for radio transmission and uh, mesosphere is basically the third layer of atmosphere and it lies above stratosphere up to the height of 80 kilometers and meteors burn up in this layer on entering from space and thermosphere extends to 80 to 40 km and ionosphere is a small part of thermosphere which helps in radio transmission question number 120 the coldest part of our atmosphere is located in which of the following layers so in thermosphere temperature decreases and it reaches uh, minimum temperature by tropopause then in stratosphere temperature again increase then in mesosphere temperature declines and that becomes the lowest part at the top of mesosphere so in mesosphere temperature decreases as the height increases and temperature can reach minus 90 degrees celsius air is much much thinner in the mesosphere than in the stratosphere there are fewer air molecules to absorb in compelling electromagnetic radiation from the sun and mesosphere has a lot of radio radiative cooling because co2 present here emits a lot of thermal radiation into space so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 121 to 113 environment and ecology question number 121 sine ecology is the study of so in last lesson i told you about sine ecology is community level and ecology of one individual is ot ecology so answer here is c ecology of a community so sine ecology is focused at understanding the interaction of group of organisms or species within a community if community was not there then many species are also correct it studies the distribution structure demography abundance of these organisms which coexist in a community 
and it may look into the symbiotic relationship occurring in a community like competition, mutualism, commensalism, predator pay, population dynamics. Question number 122. Hypolimnion is the upper layer of water, oxygen rich. Absolutely wrong. Hypolimnion is the lower layer of water, oxygen poor. Epilimnion is lower layer of water, oxygen poor. This is wrong. It is upper layer of water body, oxygen rich. Metalimnion is a transition between hypo and epilimnion. That is correct. So answer here is A3 only. So basically they have reversed it here. Okay. It is also called as thermocline because there is a sharp fall in temperature here. Question number 123. Sign ecology helps us to understand the relationship between individual plant and environment. That is wrong. It is art ecology. Art ecology helps us to understand between communities and environment. This is also wrong. So they have reversed art ecology and sign ecology. See, art, art means individual and sign means group. So answer here is D. Neither one nor two. Okay. So the trophic state of a lake is regulated by which of the following factors? The rate of nutrient supply, 100% correct. The climate, shape of basin, all these are correct. So answer is 1, 2, 3. Trophic basically means nutrients. If it increases more, it is called as eutrophication. With good nutrition. So factors which regulate the state of a lake are rate of nutrient supply. So if it is more, for example, industrial waste, etc., then the trophication will increase. Amount of sunlight, temperature, hydrology. And finally, the shape of lake basin, which is called as morphometry, that is depth, volume, surface area, and watershed to lake surface area ratio. Question number 125 Which of the following organisms belong to trophic level 1? So, the trophic level 1 is basically producers. So, trees is a producer, grass is producer, phytoplanktons are also producer. All of these are producers. Since all of them are producers, they belong to trophic level 1. These are the organisms which converts like solar energy into uh, chemical energy through food. Via, via photosynthesis etc. Darwin's finches, Galapagos finches are an example of so they are an example of allopatric speciation because of like there is a huge uh, barrier and there is uh, they are on different islands in Galapagos archipelago which is located very close to Ecuador in South America and the finches are isolated from one another by the ocean and over millions of years each species of finch developed a unique beak that is especially adapted to the kinds of food it eats and because they are geographically isolated the birds don't breed with one another and have therefore developed into unique species with unique characteristics this is a typical example of allopatric speciation which of the following is the hottest layer of the atmosphere so here the thermosphere becomes the hottest uh, the ho it is more than 2000 degrees celsius but you can't feel the heat because there are very few molecules which carry it here so thermosphere is relatively few molecules and atoms and even absorbing small amounts of solar energy can significantly increase the temperature but you will not feel the hot sensation here if somehow you reach there and if I remove your let's say gloves or anything you will not feel very hot thermosphere is the hottest layer in the atmosphere because for conduction the air is very rarefied so which of the following are the effects of eutrophication I have already told you U means good eutrophication means nutrition so there is good nutrition so obviously plant algal and animal biomass will increase 100 percent correct turbidity means like the water will be putrid it's not visible and it will be thick so that is also correct rate of sedimentation will also increase that is also correct anoxic condition will develop the speciation will change different species will come majority species might go so main effects include plant and algal biomass increase turbidity increase rate of sedimentation increase shortening the lifespan of the lake anoxic conditions may develop and species diversity decrease and the dominant species change the process by which a species and higher group of uh, taxa originate change and then go extinct it is known as macro evolution because it is major evolutionary transition from one type of organism to another occurring at the level of species and higher taxa so it is an evolution on a scale at or above the level of species in contrast to micro evolution which refers to smaller evolutionary change of allele frequencies within a species or population and co-evolution occurs when two or more species reciprocally affect each other for example it happens in parasitism mutualism etc a form of competition in which individuals of different species compete for the same resources in an ecosystem is known as since they are competing for the same resources it is called as interspecific competition because it is competition between two different species so competition basically refers to symbiotic interaction between or among living things for limited resources it can be in the form of territory goods food mates etc and it is a form of competition between different species of the same ecological area example can include lions tigers let's say cheetah also for similar prey so thank you for watching this lesson 
हे गा इज व्हाट्सअप सो लेट इस डिस्कस क्वेश्चन नंबर वन थर्टी वन टू वन फोर्टी एंड एनवायरमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर वन थर्टी वन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स अबाउट एंट्रा स्पेसिफिक कॉम्पिटिशन सो इट इज़ अ कॉम्पिटिशन फॉर रिसोर्स अमंग द सेम स्पीसीज इंट्रा मीन्स विद इन ओके इंट्रा नेशनल मीन्स विद इन द नेशन इंटरनेशनल मीन्स बिटवीन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज इंट्रा स्पेसिफिक कॉम्पिटिशन जनरली बींग अ स्ट्रॉगर फोर्स देन इंटर स्पेसिफिक कॉम्पिटिशन येस येस वेरी मच ट्रू आंसर इज सी बोथ वन एंड टू so when the same members of this when the members of same species compete for limited resources it is called as intra specific and uh, they have very similar resources requirements but when we talk about inter specific competition they have smaller contested or resource overlap so intra specific competition is very strong as compared to inter specific usually which of the following organism belong to trophic level 2 so trophic level 1 is always producers like plants trees phytoplanktons trophic level 2 will include herbivores like zooplanktons or it can include cows buffalo etc so but uh, mango tree is a tree every tree is a tree so answer here is b2 and 3 but uh, insectivorous plants might in go on trophic level 3 as well so answer here is b2 and 3 so the second trophic level consists of herbivores which are directly dependent on primary producers and they are also called as primary consumers or secondary producers mango tree is a tree so it belongs to the trophic level 1 which of the following are included in hydrosphere of earth swamp river ocean aquarium everywhere where there is water and life that is called as uh, biosphere and life and if it is just water it is called hydrosphere so hydrosphere is a total amount of water on a planet and biosphere is that part of hydrosphere atmosphere and lithosphere where life exists and hydrosphere includes water that is on the surface of the planet underground and above and a planet's hydrosphere can be liquid vapor or ice and hence all the water bodies given in the question are included in the hydrosphere Question number one thirty four. Which of the following leads to a reduction in fitness for both individuals involved in an interaction? So, if you have intraspecific competition, it is the worst possible competition. So, intraspecific competition is an interaction whereby, let's say you also want bread to eat, I also want bread to eat because both of us are human. So, that is intraspecific. So, members of the same species compete for very limited resources. It will reduce fitness of all the individuals, and most often, it will lead to differences in fitness amongst individuals. and they are competing for the same resources the fitness of individuals will gradually decline and because competition is often more intense as population size increases or resources decreases the effect of competition is often density dependent that is at higher population density competition increases and this will adversely affect survivorship and births that is population size okay question number 135 biotic and abiotic components are linked together through so they are linked together through nutrient cycles energy flow so Uh, answer here is a b c so an example of the interaction between abiotic and biotic factors is with plants and plants use sunlight water and co2 to make food and the food which is created by plants will be consumed by other trophic levels like primary consumer secondary consumer and which shows that interaction between abiotic and biotic factors occur throughout the nutrient cycle and an energy flow in an ecosystem question number 136 two male lions fight over a territory is an example of intra specific competition okay so because they belong to the same species and hence it is an example of intra specific competition uh when arizona's grand canyon found squirrels and other mammals that had once been part of a single population could no longer contact and reproduce with each other through the new geographic barrier they would no longer interbreed the squirrel population intervened so they underwent allopatric uh, speciation so allopatric speciation occurs when a species separates into two separate groups which are isolated from one another and a physical barrier like mountain range or a waterway makes it impossible for them to breed with one another each species basically develops differently based on the demands of their unique habitat or the genetic characteristics of the group and that are passed on to the offspring question 138 which of the following statement is correct habitat is the physical environment in which an organism lives that is correct all habitats are environments but all environments are not habitat 100% correct all environment lives uh, always has life in it whereas a habitat does not necessarily have life in it so this is wrong answer here is c1 and 2 so habitat is the physical environment in which an organism lives so habitat has to have a life okay but environment may not have a life in it okay question 139 environment is physical chemical and other natural forces around us habitat is area that is inhabited by a particular species biosphere is basically biological composition or hydrosphere lithosphere है ना वेयर दीज थ्री लेयर्स मीट हाइड्रोस्फेयर लिथोस्फेयर एंड एंड एटमोसफेयर ओके 
सो बोथ दी स्टेटमेंट आल दी स्टेटमेंट आर करेक्ट आंसर इज डी वन टू थ्री एंड लास्ट क्वेश्चन स्ट्रक्चरल एंड फंक्शनल यूनिट ऑफ एनवायरमेंट इज आंसर इज ऑलवेज इको सिस्टम सो इको सिस्टम इज स्ट्रक्चरल एंड फंक्शनल यूनिट ऑफ एनवायरमेंट कंप्राइजिंग ऑफ ऑल दी ऑर्गेनिजम इन अ पर्टिकुलर प्लेस इंटरेक्टिंग विद ऑन अनदर एंड विद देर एनवायरमेंट एंड इंटर कनेक्टेड बाय एन ऑन गोइंग फ्लो ऑफ एनर्जी एंड अ साइकिलिंग ऑफ मटीरियल हैबिटाट इज द एरिया वेर एन ऑर्गेनिजम लिव्स बायोस्फेर इज द रीजन ऑफ अर्थ दैट सपोर्ट्स लाइफ हाइड्रोस्फेर इज टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर ऑन दी प्लानट इट इंक्लूड सर्फेस अंडरग्राउंड एज वेल एज अबाउ दी ग्राउंड सो थैंक यू वॉचिंग दिस लेसन